Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. Now, uh, just a couple days ago, I had somebody ask me about how to get the center line off of a non-parametric tube that is uh, based off of a spline in 3D space. So here I've got a spline. As you can see, I have no history on that spline. And it is a 3D spline. It's out in space. And with this, I'm going to go into tube. I'm going to make a tube. Actually, let me pull this out and put that here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just give it some parameters. Eh, inside, outside, doesn't really matter. Just make it easy to see. So there is my tube. Okay, there's my center curve. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide that. Get rid of that. And there's now my solid face. Now, easiest way to go about doing this, what I have found is, um, you know, I've seen other people, what they like to do is they like to cut sections everywhere and try to best fit a plane and make tangent curves and cut section every whatever. It turns into a big nightmare and a mess. There is a very simple technique that you can use here. Now, what I like to do, and this is a big secret, you guys better love me for this one, is I like to come in here, go into ISO curve, okay? So with ISO parametric curve, I can pick this face. Now, um, the system does have a hard time uh, because it is a, a circle with a start and end curve. You'll notice that I'm saying five curves on this. And if I take a look at this, you'll see I have one, two, three, four. So what's going on is, is the start and the end curve are coming back on top of one another. So you, you're going to need to play around with this to get the number spacing. Um, maybe on this example, it's turning out this way. Maybe on a, maybe a, a curve or a tube that you imported from another CAD system, it may give you slightly different results. But what you want are uh, to basically get four curves at the quadrants of that surface. Okay, so you may need to put one in and so on and so forth. You may be able to uh, put in a, cur a point and then uh, put in another point that's on the other side of the arc and then draw in a line and, or, or I'm sorry, draw in your isoperms based off of those points. So there's various methods and techniques. This is just one of the many ways to go about doing this and just so happens to work well on this and select OK. So now that I have my four curves for this, I'm just going to go ahead and remove parameters. Okay, so by removing parameters, in this case, again, um, because it's bit, uh, putting one curve on top of another curve, it kind of confuses things. So by just blitzing the parameters, and again, you're building off of a non-parametric curve. You're looking to get the center line. Um, in this case, we don't really care about the parameters. So now that I've done that, let me go ahead and change the color of this. Make it... Uh, We'll make it purple. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hide this as well. And those are my curves. Now, what am I going to do with those four curves? I'm going to go into surface. I'm going to go into through curves. And I'm going to make a surface between these two curves. Now, remember, these are on the quadrants of the circle, opposite ends. So when I draw a, circle, a surface through that, I just want to create a through curve, it's going to do a best fit surface through without any sort of parameters. I'll turn on preserve shape, keep it simple, nice and clean. And I'll do the same thing in the opposite direction. And same thing. Okay. Now, with that being done, all I have to do is go into curve, intersect curve, pick my two surfaces, hit OK. And let me go ahead and hide these guys. Hide that, 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 and that. And whoops, missed a couple things. So that's my new center curve, that intersection curve. Let me change the color of this. I'm going to go in. I'll make it nice and bright. And OK. Uh, let me jack up the thickness. And... My line font so you can really tell the difference all right control shift k let me pick my old center line 
the one that I originally cur used to make that tube. And as you can see, let me zoom up on it. Let me right mouse click and let me update my display. That is almost exactly update display on top of the original curve. We're talking infinitesimally off. It's minimal. Let me go to an analysis, go to deviation gauge, pick my first object, pick my next object, and as you can see, this is in millimeters, 0 0.006. So if you want to round up and get technical, it's seven microns off of each other. So they're nearly identical. Even if it were a little bit further off, a tenth of a mil, even a quarter of a mil in most cases, because you're just bending a tube, isn't going to matter. It's going to fall well within whatever tolerance that you need. So um, you can see total samples. There's 82 samples, uh, plenty of samples that are on there. And you know, if you really want to see where those deviations are at, let me suggest a scale factor. Wow, we really can't even find any, right? I mean, there's there's nothing there of any worth. Again, it's there's no there's no deviations there. Like if you look at that deviation gauge, I say you really can't even find any. There's there's nothing there. That deviation gauge is showing 0 0.001, negative 0 0.001, and there's nothing. There's nothing. Those needles are all basically uh, showing something that's imperceptible okay so with that being done let me hide the original spline let me go ahead and make another tube just to compare the two just to prove myself out go home we'll go in here we'll go to tube use the exact same parameters hit my ok control shift k bring up my original tube and you can see that they are basically one on top of the other. Perfect. So that's how I would go back and get the center line of a tube, a 3D curve, something like that. Now, if this tube is uh, more of a, a linear section with a bend and a linear section in a bend, that's easy, right? You just uh, basically um, draw in your linear sections and then just throw in the arc radius that you need. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward like a polyline of some sort easy stuff anyway that's how I would go about doing it uh, and uh, this is something that I, don't know, I, I did a long time ago on a, on a, uh, a uh, basically I needed the envelope for a spring and uh, this is kind of the way that I did it along those lines but anyway um, I hope you liked it if you did please like the video share with your friends ask me some questions um, see what we come up with and just to note uh, soon, my uh, partnership with ASC is going to kick off. We're going to be training classes, uh, really affordable classes for anybody that's interested in CATIA and NX. I am certified as a, a DSO instructor, or I used to be. It's been a little while. I'm going to go back for my certs and same thing with NX. So if anybody's interested, please feel free to uh, click on one of the links you see on the window. Go to ASC-Institute.com and have a look. Anyway, thanks again. Uh, please share the video and subscribe to my channel.